Nazi archaeology was the movement led by various Nazi leaders, such as Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler, archaeologists and other scholars to research the German past in order to strengthen nationalism. Overview The search for a strongly nationalistic, Aryan-centric national prehistory began after Germany's loss in World War I in 1918. At this point, the country faced a severe economic crisis due in part to the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Later on, Hitler was behind the Nazi Party's funding for German prehistorical research. The first influential academic engaging in such research is said to be Gustav Cassina. His ideas and theories were picked up by the Nazi organizations AMT Rosenberg and Arneneb. Presenting Germany as the place where civilization began, the Nazis added pseudoarchaeology as part of its extensive propagandizing of the German people. Tenets The Kulturkreis culture circles. Theory of Gustav Cassina, which stated that recognition of an ethnic region is based on the material culture excavated from an archaeological site. This theory was used by the Nazis to justify takeover of foreign lands such as Poland and Czechoslovakia. For example, in his article, The German Ostmark, Cassina argued that Poland should be a part of German Reich, since any lands where an artifact was titled Germanic were therefore ancient Germanic territory, wrongfully stolen by barbarians. The social diffusion theory, which stated that cultural diffusion occurred by a process whereby influences, ideas and models were passed on by more advanced peoples to the less advanced whom they came into contact with. Examples offered by Cassina and Alfred Rosenberg presented a history of Germany equivalent to that of the Roman Empire, suggesting that Germanic people were never destroyers of culture, not like the Romans, and the French in recent times. Combined with Nazi ideology, this theory gave the perfect foundation for the view of Germany as the locomotive of world civilization. Weltanschauungswissenschaften or World View Sciences, which stated that culture and science were as one, and carried certain race-inherent values. The theory suggested that older cultural models, such as sagas, stories and legends, should be not only reincorporated into mainstream culture, but that the guiding principle in Germany must be to emphasize the high cultural level and the cultural self-sufficiency of the Germanic people." Examples were the use of Aryan-styled regalia such as the swastika, the use of German legends and runic symbols in the SS, and the idea that German scientists and their conclusions were more correct than the views of «lesser race» scientists. Deutsche Reinheit, or pure German man, suggesting that Germans were «pure Aryans» who had survived a natural catastrophe and evolved a highly developed culture during their long migration to Germany. It also suggested that Greeks were Germanic, claiming evidence that certain Indogermanic artifacts could be found in Greece. This theory supported the Kulturkreis theory tangentially, in that archaeologists who did not approve of the uses of Kulturkreis theory moderates could support this theory. The unspoken, unpublished point of Nazi archaeology was summed up in the actions and purpose of the Arneneb, which was the wholesale creation of archaeology that would support the propaganda machine of the Nazi regime. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Organizations and operations. Topic: <laughs> Arneneb. <laughs> The Arneneb organization, formerly the Deutsches Arneneb, Studiengesellschaft für Geistesurgeschichte German Ancestry, Research Society for Ancient Intellectual History was an organization started as the Research Institute for the Prehistory of Mind and was connected to the SS in 1935 by Walter Darre. In 1936 it was attached to Hitler's Reichsführer SS and led by Chief of Police Heinrich Himmler. By 1937, it was the primary instrument of Nazi archaeology and archaeological propaganda, subsuming smaller organizations like Reinhardt's Archaeology Group, and filling its ranks with «investigators». These included people like Hermann Wirth, co-founder of the Ainernerb, who attempted to prove that Northern Europe was the cradle of Western civilization. 
Although it included some real archaeologists with extreme views, such as Hans Reinath and Oswald Megan, who became high-ranking party officials due to their cooperation, much of the membership of Arnenab were second-rate archaeologists or untrained researchers, backed up by amateur enthusiasts. The main goals of the organization were to study the territory, ideas and achievements of the Indo-Germanic people to bring the research findings to life and present them to the German people to encourage every German to get involved in the organization. Although the organization claimed to have a research goal, Himmler had no official training in archaeology and was known for his interest in mysticism and the occult. Himmler defined the organization as working towards a prehistory which would prove the preeminence of the Germans and their Germanic predecessors since the beginning of civilization. He is quoted as saying, A nation lives happily in the present and the future so long as it is aware of its past and the greatness of its ancestors. The Arnenib had difficulty finding scientists to work on the projects and was run largely by scholars from branches of the humanities, which made their research more amateurish. The group went on to be responsible for pseudo-archaeology, illustrated by open-air displays honoring Germanic heritage such as the Externstein, a sandstone formation that was thought to have been a key Germanic cult site. Another example is the Sachsenhain, where 4,500 Saxons were executed as a punishment for Widukind's uprising. This site was used as an idealized shrine, considered sacred to the Germanic people and highlighting their readiness for self-sacrifice. Many other sites were censored from the public since they did not have the correct Germanic interpretations. The sites chosen for excavations were limited to those of Germanic superiority such as Erdenberg, where the Arnenab claimed to have clear evidence of the victorious campaign of the Germany against the Romans. Some of the Arnenab's most extravagant activities include Edmund Kiss tried to travel to Bolivia in 1928 to study the ruins of temples in the Andes Mountains. He claimed their similarity to ancient European construction indicated they were designed by Nordic migrants, millions of years earlier. In 1938, Franz Altheim and his research partner Erika Troutman requested the Arnenab sponsor their Middle East trek to study an internal power struggle of the Roman Empire, which they believed was fought between the Nordic and Semitic peoples. In 1936 an Arnenab expedition visited the German island of Rügen and then Sweden, with the objective of examining rock art which they concluded was «proto-Germanic». Nazi theorists took a huge interest in the Bayeux tapestry, going so far as to attempt archaeological digs to find other contemporary artwork which would support their assertion of Germanic might. In 1938 the Arnenab sent an expedition to Tibet with the intention of proving Aryan superiority by confirming the Vril theory, which was based on Edward Bulwer-Lytton's book Vril, The Power of the Coming Race. Their study included measuring the skulls of 376 people and comparing native feature to those associated with Aryans. The expedition's most scientific findings are associated with biological finds. AMT Rosenberg A smaller, more professional group of archaeologists, at least in their background and training, was led by Rosenberg and part of his AMT Rosenberg organization, the Reichsbund für Deutsche Vorgeschichte. It was staffed with archaeologists who signed on to some of Rosenberg's later thinking and theory. Rosenberg saw world history as shaped by the eternal fight between the Nordic Atlantic, the pure-blooded Nordic people of Atlantis, and the Semites, or Jewish people. To him, only the Germanic people brought culture to the world, while Jews brought evil. He speculated that the people of Germany were survivors from Atlantis who had migrated to Germany. He saw Germans as a distinct race, not only in biological terms but in mental phenomena and in their will to live. Hence, he advocated race materialism, stating that only the fittest race Aryans should survive, a tenet that would later shape the Nazi policy on the final solution. The AMT Rosenberg was dedicated to finding archaeological evidence of the superiority of Germanic culture and of Atlantis, and in this it was much aided by and in turn, gave aid to the Thule Society. Topic. Goals of Nazi archaeology Topic. To the public Nazi archaeology was rarely conducted with an eye to pure research, but was a propaganda tool designed to both generate nationalistic pride in Germans and provide scientific excuses for conquest. 
The German people were drawn to the idea of Germany as the site of the origins of civilization by several means. For one, there were a series of films put out by Lothar Zotz with titles like Threatened by the Steam Plow, Germany's Bronze Age, The Flames of Prehistory and On the Trail of the Eastern Germans. These used the appeal of myths, olden times, and German triumph over change to reinforce the idea that German history was something to be proud of, while at the same time taking advantage of the fact that since these periods of history were little known to the general public, they could include heavy doses of propaganda. Additionally, public journals gained popularity such as Die Kunde the message, and German and Erb Germanic heritage. With the journals and films, Germans thought they were being given good visuals and interpretations of different archaeological sites and learning more about true German prehistory. The Nazis also pushed the public to get involved in the search for the past, using the appeal of patriotism as a tool. For example, the membership flyer of one amateur organization of the AMT Rosenberg stated, "...responsibility with respect to our indigenous prehistory must again fill every German with pride." The goal of the organization was also stated as, "...the interpretation and dissemination of unclassified knowledge regarding the history and cultural achievements of our northern Germanic ancestors on German and foreign soil." Along with appealing to public patriotism there were open-air museums that reconstructed Neolithic and Bronze Age lake settlements at Unterildingen. These public museums also gained immense popularity and pushed the people to believe in and search for their Germanic past. All of this, gathered together, created a skein of Germanic pride that was used to reinforce the nationalistic, fascist message Adolf Hitler was crafting with his speeches, open-air meetings, and public image. <laughs> to archaeologists Prior to the formation of the Arneneb, there was little funding for or interest in Germanic archaeology. This reality made it even easier for the Nazis to push their ethnocentric views onto the uninformed public, but the true effect was felt in some scholarly circles. German scholars who specialized in archaeology had long been envious of the advancements in archaeology their neighbors had made during their excavations in the Middle East, however, such archaeologists could do little. With Hitler that changed, funds were made available for scholars to make great advancements beyond their neighboring countries. Under Nazi rule, archaeology went from having one chair in prehistory in Marburg in 1933 to having nine chairs in the Reich in 1935. Once archaeology started gaining popularity, scholars were also able to excavate castles, old ruins and the like, and bring back pieces for display in museums. One example of those changes was that the Romish Germanisches Central Museum, Romano Germanic Central Museum in Mainz in 1939 became for a time the Central Museum für Deutsche Vor- und Frühgeschichte Central Museum for German Pre- and Early History. Note the difference between the original Romish Germanisch, which denotes a historical period, and Deutsche, implying a continuous history and one people, Anglo-Saxon, and English, would be rough analogies. In their enthusiasm for the Nazi regime's support of archaeology, many German archaeologists became pawns and puppets of the real goals behind the movement. They answered to the requests of the Arneneb, and not always in the interests of pure archaeology. <laughs> Notable figures <laughs> Gustav Cassina. The nationalistic theories of Gustav Cassina about the origins and racial superiority of Germanic peoples influenced many aspects of Nazi ideology and politics. He is also considered to be a precursor of Nazi archaeology. Cassina was trained as a linguist at universities in Göttingen, Leipzig, Berlin, and Strasbourg but eventually held the chair for Germanic archaeology at the University of Berlin. He laid the groundwork for an ethnocentric German prehistory. One of his theories, the Kulturkreis theory, was a basis on which Nazi archaeology was founded. Cassina also published books for a general readership which were useful tools for German propaganda and created archaeological expeditions which allowed the Nazis to use Kulturkreis theory as an excuse for territorial expansion. In one of his most popular books, Die Deutsche Vorgeschichte, Eine Hörvergend National Wissenschaft German Prehistory, a pre-eminently national discipline, Cassina puts forward the idea of an Aryan race superior to all peoples, the Germany, and shows Germany as the key to an unwritten history. 
The point of the book is clear from the beginning as the dedication reads, "...to the German people, as a building block in the reconstruction of the externally as well as internally disintegrated fatherland." Cassina died in 1931, 13 months before Hitler seized power. Alfred Rosenberg Alfred Rosenberg was a Nazi party ideologist who supported excavation and the study of provincial Roman Germany. He stated, as a summary of his research and thoughts, that, "...an individual to whom the tradition of his people and the honor of his people is not a supreme value, has forfeited the right to be protected by that people." Rosenberg's perspective on German prehistory led mainly to racist distortion of data which did not directly apply to the Germanic people. Rosenberg's book Der Mythos des 20. Jahrhunderts the myth of the 20th century gave support to the concept of a new Germanic religion. Rosenberg's theory, Weltanschauungswissenschaften, was implicit in the idea that Germany had the right to crush other nations, or even exterminate them, since German culture was superior. He also tried to prove that the Nordic Aryans originated on a lost landmass identified with Atlantis, and that Jesus was not a Jew but an Aryan Amorite. <laughs> Hans Reinath Hans Reinath was the main archaeologist Rosenberg used. Reinath is famous for his excavations at the Feder Sea and he saw the Nazi Party as a tool he could use to work his way up in society. This is just what occurred, and in 1934 Rosenberg appointed him to the position of Reich Deputy of German Prehistory. This made him the spokesman for the purification and Germanization of the German prehistory. Reinath was an adherent of Hitler's theory of German racial purity. Though this theory never really came into full effect, Reinath pushed it heavily as Reich Deputy, and encouraged archaeological exploration. His archaeological group, along with the Arnenab organization, was used to the Nazis' full advantage since it was professional. <laughs> Other Nazi archaeologists Erika Troutman E. O. von Gronhagen Assian Bomers Hans-Jürgen Eggers Herbert Jankun Gero von Mehrhardt Gotthard Newman, Gustav Schwantes, Ernst Sprockhoff, Ernst Wally, Wilhelm Unverzacht, Joachim Werner, Hans Zeiss, Werner Radig, Albert Funk, Ludwig Kohl Larsen See also Nazi propaganda Nationalism and archaeology Arnenib List of topics characterized as pseudoscience <laughs>